Remarkable is a deep learning computer vision company. We actually uh, picked up one of the hardest thing to do in computer vision, which is fashion recognition. And da, I'm a, I'm a female, you know, I picked something that is relative to my interest. But actually there's a few more reasons. Um, so fashion is actually the most needed sector in computer vision, especially for visual search. Thank you. I mean, just like uh, any other search company like Google or Baidu in the world, they are a text search company, and we're basically a visual search company. So there's different tiers of visual search. There's facial recognition, which I consider nowadays is not that hard to do anymore. Uh, it's really just a data problem, how much data you have. And then above that is product recognition. So product, like a chair or a um, or a microphone, all of them have their distinct shape. For, for each object, you have to train for that shape. And then above object recognition is actually deformable object recognition, which is fashion. I'm wearing the jacket, you know, as I move around, the shape of the jacket change. So we actually end up picking something much harder than facial recognition, harder than furniture recognition. Um, it's also one of the most needed, because it's very hard to describe fashion. How do you describe this jacket on Google? Like, it's, it's extremely hard, but it's much easier just to submit an image and have computer vision take care of it. So how do I do? Okay. So um, deep learning computer vision had a really big breakthrough around end of 2015 and beginning of 2016. I've known many, many startups that are trying to do product recognition, especially fashion recognition, even from like seven years ago. And all of them have pivoted or failed because they did it too early. Like detection was not even there. Um, I actually tried to build this technology myself from scratch uh, around 2014 and realized it's just so hard. Like the accuracy is low that no one would use this. Until 2015 and 2016, I ran across a few papers published in CVPR, if you guys know computer vision, there's like CVPR conference, ICCV, ECCV. So these conferences, this world scientists publish the latest findings, latest research. So if you follow those conferences, you'll always find the latest publication, what is in the scene. And through following those conferences, I've seen a few papers about recognizing deformable fashion objects from a very messy background. And at that time, the accuracy, if you guys know sense time, one of the, uh, actually there's only two unicorn AI <laughs> company in the world. One of them is sense time. The other time is, the other one is Meltwater. And they're actually more like machine learning company. Um, they're all, they're both like, they're probably the only two billion dollar deep learning companies. And sense time had published a paper, um, their accuracy was 16%. That's mid-2016. And now our accuracy is 96%. And you can ask me, how do I come up with the accuracy? Well, we, um, we basically, you have to, because whether it's accurate or not, it's actually subjective. So we, we use a very objective way. So if we have the product in our database, finding that product from any random image on the number one or number two spot is 96%. And that's about the highest people ever seen. So, so far we're the most accurate fashion recognition company in the world. And uh, we also just developed a video recognition technology as well. So why we, why we focus on video? So video has always been the focus. It's just like you have to, before you finish video, you have to finish image. While we're doing this today, you know, uh, the richest company in the world right now, they're divided, one of them is the content, visual content platforms. We're talking about Netflix, YouTube, they're getting all the eyeballs, because video traffic is gonna be 80% of the internet traffic by 2020. We're all addicted. <laughs> and on the other side, you know, there's Amazon, there's all these retail companies. As you know, they, they get the most transactions. So the content gets most eyeballs, and the e-commerce gets most transactions. But 
the eyeballs guys, the, the content ones, they actually don't have much revenue. Like even Netflix, they're throwing away like two billion a year just buying contents from everywhere. They're, they're not profitable at all. Like most of these content platforms, they're losing money, um, buying content, just they're in the middle of spending money to conquer the land. And for the retailers, e-commerce, they make a lot of, they have a lot of revenue, but they don't have enough eyeballs, especially if you're not Amazon. Everyone's trying to manage their own platform. Even Macy's here, you know, they're losing uh, their revenue projection. They lost like nine billion compared to the previous years. In the last few years, um, they're all losing to Amazon's traffic. So how do we solve this problem? We can bring content more revenue, and we can bring e-commerce more eyeballs by making advertising more organic. So this is the problem, the mission of the company. We're basically saying on the left is annoying ads. On the right is organic ads that user initiatives. So I like this shirt, I click on it, and I can buy it. Or even if I don't buy it, the fact that I see it is value. So that's like advertising called CPM versus CPS. So this is a quick experience. I can click on a button here, and the products will pop up. As you've seen the video, I can add the product to my shopping cart and see other similar products, also using computer vision, and finish the checkout. And thankfully, today, you know, we're in a stage where checkout technology are very advanced, and they're all competing with each other. There's Stripe, there's Shopify, Magento. So you can integrate with any one of them and get a smooth experience. Because content platform, they don't want their traffic to leak. They don't, just because they want revenue doesn't mean they want you to see this product while watching a TV show, and then next moment you go to Amazon. Um, they want you to stay on their site. So having the checkout piece is actually crucial. This is another experience where you can pause the video and then we show you, not only we show you who are the actors and actresses, you know, on Amazon Prime, they have a feature called X-Ray. You pause the video, you see who are the actors. Here is like, we call it X-Ray for products. Not only you see actress, you can also see what they're wearing. <clears throat> okay. So this is a quick product demonstration. This is our, um, how our demo, our technology work in the back. Earlier, you guys seen the application. First, we started building the photo recognition. And our photo recognition is using, you know, combi comparing the feature vectors from the left to all the product database. We actually aggregated 800 brands and total 5 million products from across the US. You make a signature for each one of them, like a feature vector. You can compare and do a match. And also, we automatically recognize the products from any given. We know the location of the product on the image as well. This is our Chrome extension, which you can download and shop any image you see on the internet. Doesn't matter if you're on Google or if you're on Pinterest. And this is our video recognition. It's built on top of photo, but it's added a few more pieces. For example, tracking. Because video is basically moving pictures. But every second, let's say there's 96 frames, you cannot treat video like 96 images. That means you have to search 96 times every second. It will kill your system. So here we added like Basically, similar technology like civilian camera. You know, we track the product where it goes, so we know exactly from second one to second five, it's the same product. We're not searching it twice. And then we strategically pick a few frames during that period and only search once. Even if the product disappears and reappears, we still know that it's the same product. And here's how it's application. We're actually currently working with um, one of the TikTok's sister company to make a short video shopping app. Short video is now the, the hottest thing. <laughs> like the short video, short videos really keep your attention on your app compared to long videos, because people get sync into 
one long video story, but when you're looking at a short video, you're, you're never satisfied. 15 seconds gone, and now you're like, what next? You can keep watching hundreds of short videos and forget about time. And that's actually according to some statistics in China. TikTok is actually a, now becoming one of the biggest company in China. They're actually um, winning Baidu. Even though TikTok sounds like a commercial app, but they have thousands, actually have 3,000 AI computer vision scientists in the back. And most of them are video recognition scientists. They're not using video recognition for shopping yet, but they use it for like changing the way you look in the video, <laughs> making you look prettier, and some special effects, things like that. <clears throat> so I think for the biggest problem for most AI company out there is how to stay focused. You know, we have really smart people in our team, but the smart researchers tend to say yes to everything. They will say, yes, I can do this, and yes, I can do that. I can do anything. So when you have five clients, and each one of the five clients say, can you do this? They want different things. And most AI company, even some most famous AI companies out there, will say yes to all of them and try to monetize all of them. That's not a good way. Like I think um, we've seen failures from AI companies doing that. The most important thing is to stay focused. And you want to stay focused on a big market, not a small market. We actually try to have our image recognition just working with retailers. And then we realize that market is just too small because retailers, you know, they don't pay that much. And then we realize, you know what, the rich guys are a platform, content platforms. They're spending billions of dollars creating their own content. Why don't I give them a new way to monetize the content? So this actually end up become our current focus. You want to make sure you're serving the rich guys and you know, AI companies, not the charity. The global market size. <laughs> and visual search trend. I mean, I think for most investors, I mean, we all care about investors, what they think about a company. Um, the number one thing is, are we in the right sector? Is the sector growing dramatically over years? Sometimes they might not be investing in you, they might invest in the trend. Actually, most sophisticated investors invest in both. They invest in the person, and they're investing in the sector is growing really fast. So the sector we're in, we're in the digital video market. And digital video market, every five years, there's like a new revolution. And we're betting on that we're gonna be the next revolution. It used to be pre-rolls, you know, if you watch a Hulu show and then they stop you for 10 seconds every hour. And this is our current clients. We have, I wanna bore you with this. We definitely, uh, Weibo is actually the Facebook of China. So we're working on making all their celebrities photo and video shoppable. Like Me is actually the sister company from TikTok that we're working with. We're still a 2B company. We're giving them our technology to launch. So, um, so for big data and AI company, what is the most important thing? Is that revenue? I would say most AI companies take a few years to complete a product where you can launch. So before that, you know, revenue is not sustainable. You have to focus on your KPI. What is your KPI? For us, our KPI is our search to purchase rate. And we have never changed. If you stay focused on your KPI, then you can worry less about revenue. So this is the, um, especially in New York, the New York investor is always asking you, what is your revenue? Because they're all financial background. But the truth is, you're gonna be very firm with them. You say, we are a technology company. And revenue will come if our KPI is growing. At the same time, you know, um, another problem that most AI company encounter is that how valuable is on my model? Everyone, every scientist think the model they build is super valuable that no one else have. They don't want to give out to anyone, but when we work with really big companies, they want us, they want our model to run on their server. Because they don't want to, it's actually better for startups as well, because if you run the model on your server for these big companies, it will kill your costs 
the AWS cost, you know, the cloud computing cost is huge. So what we learned is, you know, your model is not that valuable. It's only a matter of time for any big companies to know the ingredients in your model. The value is really the data. So the more you get out of the closet, the higher chance you can survive. So we actually willing to put our model on any big client's server in exchange for their data, because data is our lifeblood. And how do you be profitable? Um, well, most companies are not profitable, including the for Fortune 500 companies, but you have to aim for profitability. So one of the things I learned is like, you know, you have to learn what is your cost of goods sold. And for us, our cost of goods sold for AI company is computing cost, you know, and also annotation cost, and of course talents, but you can write talents into R&D expenses because they are research and development expenses. If your cost, if your cost of goods sold is healthy, then eventually you'll be profitable. So we actually learned to lower our costs by moving away from cloud servers. I would say five years ago, everybody says it's stupid to have your local machines. And now we're actually moving away from cloud servers just because they're getting so expensive, especially AWS. I mean, I know Azure will give you free credit and Google will give you free credit because they're fighting for the, you know, for the market. Um, AWS is a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually realized if we run the same thing on local machine, we save the cost by, we only spend about one sixth of the same cost for our computation costs. So now we're actually doing the reverse trend, moving everything to machines. And the challenge is a shortcut of an AI company. I would say the biggest challenge is infrastructure, because you know we start through a demo and to build a demo, you need AI scientists, you need engineers, but can you launch the technology with really big clients on the scalable infrastructure? And I realized, you know, from being in New York and trying to hire really good infrastructure talents for years, those talents are actually much harder to hire than, you know, a PhD AI scientist. <laughs> because those kind of people, they're already in big companies who have the experience of handling really scalable technology. They're in big companies getting paid a ton. For you to be able to steal them and say, hey, we don't have much traffic here to make, put you to use, but we think we'll potentially have traffic in the future, is not that attractive. So the shortcut we find is actually try not to do everything yourself. We partnered up with one of the biggest video civilian camera infrastructure company in China, and they have infrastructure in every single city. And we basically put our model and run on their parallel computing um, infrastructure. And that problem was solved. You know, I have no idea, you know, do I have to spend $10 million to fix this? So there's a lot of things, you know, try not to do alone. And um, thank you for the time. I think we're also hiring, especially infrastructure talents, as you can hear from me. And also AI talents, the company is definitely expanding. We ra previously already raised $6 million. Um, we're closing another $5 million run right now, so we're looking to hire another five to seven really deep um, AI talents. And you have to have minimum three to five years experience. And that's about it, thank you. <laughs>